In this video, we're going to discuss Le Chatelier's Principle. Le Chatelier's Principle is one of those things that's kind of simple at the surface, but shows up over and over and over again in chemistry, biology, even physics. So it's a concept that we'll see iterations of and analogies to as we progress through our science education. Let's go ahead and get started and talk through what Le Chatelier's Principle is and why it's valuable. So Le Chatelier's principle is named after Henry Louis Le Chatelier, who uh, discovered this or wrote papers about it in 1884. Remember, a lot of this thermodynamic research was happening in the late 1800s. And he based his ideas off of the Van Hoft equation and the Van Hoft principle, which we discussed in an earlier video. And what he found was, yeah, sure, there's these equilibrium measures we have, KEQ or equilibrium constant, but there's also an interesting phenomena that happens when you shift a reaction out of its equilibrium. So let's look at a reaction and see what would happen if we messed with it. So let's say we have our A plus B equals C plus C, it could be anything, and it's at equilibrium, it's happy, it's balanced, and then all of a sudden you come in and you add a whole bunch more of C. You just plop a whole bunch more of product C into the reaction what would happen? Well, let, what Le Chatelier found out is the reaction hates that. The reaction is not into being out of equilibrium. We want to be at equilibrium. We want to be balanced. It's a fundamental principle of thermodynamics. So the reaction will shift against the change to recalibrate back to equilibrium. What does that mean? If we have too much C, we're gonna drive the reaction backwards to reestablish more A and B and get us back to the concentration balance and ratio that we had at equilibrium. Because remember, our KEQ, our products over our reactants, products over our reactants is a ratio. So if we drastically increase the products in order to maintain KEQ, we're gonna actually want more reactants to balance out this value. And that's exactly what happens. We'll actually see a shift, we call it a left shift back to reactants when we add in too much C. So this idea that when we have a change in concentration or pressure or temperature, the system will react to counteract that change and bring us back to equilibrium, we see over and over again, especially in our biology. We have this concept called homeostasis, where we maintain our body temperature, we maintain our body pressure, we maintain our concentrations of various solutes and salts, we maintain our pH balance to be about 7.4. All of this is happening in this dynamic equilibrium, and if we add a whole bunch of something to our system, our system will counteract that to get back to baseline. One of the most common and obvious examples of this is something called the bicarbonate buffer system. The bicarbonate buffer system is a way that we regulate acid content and CO2 in our cardiovascular and pulmonary regulation. So you may have seen this before, we have CO2 in water, uh, we have a lot of that in our bodies and out in the air, and then it can convert into carbonic acid, which is this guy here, which is kind of an intermediate phase, because as soon as it becomes carbonic acid in our body, which is oh so slightly alkaline, 7.4, we'll talk about it more in our pH lectures, it's going to shift very quickly to becoming bicarbonate, which is this ion here, and hydrogen protons or acid. So this is really happening in our body. And again, I think it's really cool to learn Le Chatelier's by seeing how it works in real life. Because once you learn this, you're gonna see it all over the place and be like, wow, it's so obvious and relevant and, and duh, it does this. But it's one of those things that we needed to put into a principle before we could really see how it works. So let's use our bicarbonate buffer system to visualize Le Chatelier's principle in a real life setting. So in our body, Right now, let's just say that everything here in this reaction, this chemical reaction is at equilibrium. We have a balanced amount of CO2 and water and carbonic acid and bicarbonate and acid. We're all at equilibrium, we're all really happy. Then you decide to hold your breath. If you hold your breath, what happens to the CO2 in your body? If you guessed increased, you're absolutely correct because if you Hold your breath, our body produces carbon dioxide through our muscles and metabolism, and usually we breathe that carbon dioxide out as we exhale. 
And in doing so, we maintain a balance. But if you hold your breath, now we're not exhaling, getting rid of any of that CO2. And so it's going to build up. We're going to end up with more CO2 in our body if you hold your breath. Now, our nice, beautiful bicarbonate buffer system uh, reaction is out of balance. We're too reactant heavy, right? So what's going to happen? We're going to drive to the right. We go through carbonic acid, and we're going to end result increasing bicarbonate and, more importantly, increasing our acid content in our blood. So we're going to make our blood more acidic just by holding our breath. It's called respiratory acidosis. If you do it for too long, it's problematic, right? So this is a really clear example of Le Chatelier's principle. We have too much carbon dioxide, and so the reaction shifts to the right, resulting in an increase in acid content in our body. Now, once that gets too high, it's going to shift back to the left and go back and forth. But in questions that you're asked, we always want to think about the immediate impact of the change to one of our variables. So the immediate impact here is increasing carbon dioxide, resulting in a more acidic content of our blood. Now, let's look at the opposite direction. What if we were to hyperventilate, to breathe really fast? If you're to breathe really fast and hyperventilate, now you're breathing out a lot of CO2, right? More than our body can produce, so unless you're exercising. So we're going to decrease our reactants. Now we're tipping where our reactants are much lower than our products. That's also not happy making for our body. So what are we going to do? We're going to drive back towards, we're going to get those reactants back up, right? Drive towards it. And in doing so, our end result is going to be to decrease the amount of bicarbonate and decrease the amount of acid or make us more alkaline instead. This is respiratory alkalosis. And it's one of the reasons why if someone's hyperventilating, you give them a paper bag to breathe in and out because then they'll breathe back in their carbon dioxide that they just breathed out and maintain a little bit more of that balance. Now notice we can do this seesaw either way. We could um, have chemical reactions happening in our body that increase acid and increasing acid would drive us to the left. Or we could have chemical reactions in our body that decrease our acid, and that would drive us back to the right. But again, our whole goal is to get back to the same KEQ, back to the same equilibrium. Whatever that value of balance is, whenever we have a shift that's off, we're going to reset so our ratio always remains the same. So our KEQ will end up being the same because we're shifting back in balance. And that is what the Chatelier's principle is. One of my tricks for this is a little kind of mnemonic where we say up and away, where if we increase one of our components, we're going to drive the arrow away from it. Increase acid, drive the arrow away. Increase CO2, drive the arrow away. Or down and two, like downtown, down and two, down and town. And so if our concentration decreases, we'll point the arrow of the direction of change towards that arrow. Now, there's a lot of ways we can describe this. We can say favoring, driving towards products, driving towards reactants, shifting left, shifting right. All right, there's a lot of different versions, but it's all the same principle. And this happens with concentration, like we talked about here. It happens with temperature. We drive from high temperature to low temperature, right? It's shifted out so that everything is equal. We see it with pressure. If we have a high pressure area and a low pressure area. The high pressure is going to go to the low pressure to equal it out. We see this over and over and over again. It's deeply rooted in the second law of thermodynamics and entropy, the idea that everything kind of wants to be equally dispersed, spread out, randomized. Um, but it's also this deep principle of equilibrium and balance. Again, fundamental principle of the universe, fundamental principle of our body that we see over and over again once you look out for it. When working with Le Chatelier problems, I highly recommend drawing out the reaction and drawing out those little arrows just like we did in this video. So up and away, down and two, it's going to help you visualize those shifts as they change based on concentration, temperature, or pressure. Again, you're going to see this happen over and over again in biochemical sciences. So when in doubt, Think Le Chatelier's and see if that helps you understand what's changing in a given environment or system. I hope you found this lesson helpful and I'll see you in our next video.